Good day, folks. I hope you've watched my earlier video, my last one about um, exploiting capacitors and their various features. And essentially, the conclusion is any capacitor such as this one here, instead of being one capacitor, it's actually one capacitor with two virtual capacitors. So essentially a C1, the regular one, C2 and C3, which are essentially virtual capacitors against each plate here. And the actual check cases chassis here so essentially i talked all about that and if you don't know please watch the video and i just want to show you something here that this is very interesting a discovery here and of course before everybody says nothing new here i've talked about this and showed it in earlier high frequency projects that capacitors and certain configurations can self-rectify AC directly. Now, this is usually only applicable with high frequency, very high frequency, and it's a parasitic effect. So it's kind of like a little DC bias with very high frequency because of the essentially the ionization, well, not oxidization in the um, electrolyte. It's like parasitic. It's very microscopic, but just enough. It's a parasitic effect, usually ignored or filtered out completely if high frequency applications demand it. That's why it's actually in the specifications. So I have a point where I'm saying this is there's actually a way if you follow my last video that you could actually drive with real AC, passive AC, field rectification without closing the loop without using very much current and this big capacitor here within the um i believe 20 da, 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 da. yes twenty thousand uf okay will charge pretty well instantly so this is not parasitic ac kind of effect and no diode so what's nice about this effect is you don't have rectification loss forward voltage loss heat in the diode and since it's a um, we're bypass we're using displacement currents and field driven rectification so we're bypassing the ohmic losses as well so don smith talked a little bit about this how he had a way without any details of how to reduce the heat and transformer rectification setups where he had the transformer running the load but at very high efficiency without well very little heat in the transformer if you rectify in this method so right now i have the meter connected on there the plus and the negative just a little bit of leftover voltage in here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to feed the ac to the virtual c1 so i've noticed that c1 is best when you take the positive plate here against the, the case here the chassis so that's the drive at AC. Now remember that this is AC. So usually with AC capacitance, what you get is reactance, right? So it just passively gives you reactive ohms and usually just drops it. It doesn't charge up. You can, you need a rectifier to do that. But here we're gonna do it with real slow AC, usable real watts power output. So we're gonna have the inverter here. I have an extension cord and this is the light, the lamp, DC by the way which is connected to the capacitor, not lighting right now because there's not enough in there. But my point is when we turn the AC on without any rectification or bypassing all that, the ohmic losses, the rectifier, everything, and the light will shine very nice at its nominal setting while the capacitor charge is really nice. So here I have the, an extension cord here that I cut. And for convenience here, I have the um, live knotted out here and the return on this side here so we're going to just to help me so i can because i only have one hand here so we're going to place the return on the positive end here this is the positive of the capacitor like this i see nothing going on and right here is going to be my live which i'm going to touch down here but i'm going to turn on my inverter over here the power supply I'm going to turn on so we're going to see that the inverter takes about 190 ma idling at 12 volts so now in my hands we're live with the 120 or so to 60 hertz ac so we're going to connect this right away to the to the chassis make sure nothing falls here okay so i'm going to tap it and look what happens it charges right up all right sorry for the flicker it was falling off i had to grab it there before everything fell off so as i was saying the ac here which is our live 
is going to connect to the CASIS and the plus is the return. So the actual real capacitor here is still isolated and we're on the meter and I had just given the tap and look how quick it charges. Real DC in our load, nominal, no problem at all. And this is not just the AC running through the LED. This is connected right here on the DC and it runs fine. And we're loading less than 200 MA here to do this. So it's completely field driven and it's maybe two watts or less to drive in. It doesn't matter what we're loading it. And we have basically, once I disconnect this one here, like I'm gonna do now, three different capacitive paths. Now we're discharging. See, it's of course it's DC because I'm not even holding it no more. So this is not an AC reactive kind of thing. It really is converting the AC on its own. It's not a parasitic effect. It's real honest to God current. And this capacitor here at very high UF is just gobbling it up right away with a load. If I don't have a load, this goes up to 40, 50, 60, like the AC. And, and at you know, to 20,000 UF, that's a really snappy discharge. It's real current. You can, you can discharge, you know, still discharging a little. So we're going to give another tap here. It basically turns on right away as I tap it. It's already going up. So this is per, this is very significant. See, real DC and usable as well. Now, if I don't have the load, we can let it, and I can show you, we can actually snap it and you'll get a massive spark here because it will go real high if I let it. So I'll show you that right now. Well, in a moment, actually. So what you're probably gonna say is, oh, Joel, there's nothing here. You're, 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 you're fooling yourself. You've got an inverter here. It's a cheap inverter. You're essentially pulse DCing, charging untraditionally, but the virtual capacitor is nothing to see here. Dielectric absorption and leakage, uh, effective series resistance divider networks, nothing to see here or reactive. This isn't even reactive. So to show you this, I hate doing this, but I got an extension cord right here connected to the real mains. So we're going to disconnect this real quick and we're going to do the same test with the mains to show you it works the same way with real honest to God, 60 hertz sine wave AC, no rectifier loss, no nothing, real honest to God power, no closing the loop. I'll show you that right now real quick. So we're going to close power supply here. I'm going to get our AC input right here. And I'm carefully going to going to plug it in here all with one hand. All right, here we go. So this one is our live right now off the real mains, really powerful. Nothing going on because we discharge here, but I'm going to touch it here. Same thing. Look at this. Right away. So we're rectifying from the mains without a rectifier, charging the capacitor. The regular capacitor feels it and is isolated from this. And when I disconnect this, you get three capacitors, C1, this plate C2 and this plate C3, and they're all individual as I showed. So I could actually short one of these without affecting the main one or the other, which is interesting, the same way during the charge up. So now let's, I'm gonna put this carefully down here for now, let's try something interesting. Let's disconnect the load and let it charge. And what it wants to charge show you it's not a parasitic field effect it's going to want to go right to the whole ac without a direct connection then we're going to discharge it to show you its real power so we're going to do this again the meter so we could watch it so let's tap the chassis here with our live and the neutral is still connected to the plus side by the way so we're going to Touch that now, and look how high it's going. So this is charging at the full 20K, 20,000 UF. And this capacitor maxes out at 40 volts. 
So I wouldn't want it to go. Just like this. So now my meter timed out. All right, there's a real 12 volts there. So let's let's charge it up again. So let's charge it up. We're charging it up just by touching the It's interesting at how high it, it actually gets for pure field dynamics. Let's see if we can get it close to the max of this capacitor. I'm not touching it properly either, so could be better connection but just for the demonstration here but this is getting pretty serious power at this many uf so 24 volts let's just call that a day and let's try to snap that Yeah, I'm sure you saw that one. There's the rebound. But what's interesting is I'll disconnect the AC now and show you that all three capacitors have their own individual potential. So now we're going to take one leg off. So this is rebounding pretty quickly. So we're going to touch the chassis here. And there's 2.5. We're draining it with the meter. And I can do the same thing here. I'll take this one here. This is a new capacitor right here. This could be our C3. Right here. See, there was a 1.3 here. So they're all different levels slightly. So anyways, my point is you get real honest-to-God power, real rectification, and it can run your loads in real time, rectify it, and any big capacitor will do it. Purely field-driven rectification.